I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck you. You were never one of us. You were nothing but an imposter. Among us. A false crewmate. Among us. You are such a silent. Doom Eternal is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices that it caused me to create a sun via mitosis. In this adventure, you play as John Doom, a man stricken with irrationally severe autism who does not consider or think through his actions and effects on other people, and in his quest to save mankind, kills God, God God, and Satan God God, who is also himself. If this in-depth and engaging hardcore male gameplay sounds appealing, then I've got the game for you. This game is of course the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016 with a few key differences. All right then, buddy. I'm going to shit yourself. Which meaningfully extends and builds off of the gameplay and challenges that we love. Then extends them some more off of a fucking cliff until the product that emerges out the other side resembles crack concentrate. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you've probably played the game since I don't actually want to help people buy things. I'm here to entertain people and if you're clamoring for entertainment and haven't purchased this game, yet, do yourself a favor. There's enough male hormones here to transition someone, and I can guarantee you results, my fellow Sigma males. So whether you're a psychopath like me or new to modern Doom games, come with me on this amazing journey through Twitch gameplay, beautiful environments, nonsensically fucked up lore, and remixed Mongolian throat singing, for money is temporary, but Doom is eternal. I would say that Doom Eternal's gameplay is quite unique and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, and unilaterally combat system from which the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. Yes every good game ever. If I, for instance, became 12 and booted up GTA 5, I would be able to do at least a dozen unfun activities. Doom's design is focused harder than the average Persona fan on his local playground, and that is special. You will play the game in the way that is fun, or you will lose. So as good as 2016 was, a Polygon journalist could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable. Because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I get to choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. That. Yet Doom Eternal asks the question, why not force you to use every mechanic all the time without stopping? In a world where AAA studios try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best, and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the main component of that gameplay is the arsenal, because John Doom uses every weapon throughout the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it isn't a replacement, it's a genuine addition to your arsenal. Every one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off. Fire a rocket. Fire a ballista. Fire flames. Freeze him. Fire fire on his freeze and fro shotgun. Shotgun. Brain aneurysm. Just as important as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only way to get ahead of the competition is to kill them. How do I heal when low? Kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill them with a chainsaw. In addition, most weapons in the game have two mods which completely change their behavior. Such stunning examples would be the microwave beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit's cool. But on top of eight weapons, 12 mods, and a declining mental state, we keep going. More than any one weapon, you'll be using your suit abilities, and they all have individual buttons. This is in addition to the eight that you use for weapons. These would be things like zoom for fast, grenade for death, Swedish grenade for life, punch for no reason, and a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's the fucking Moonlight Sonata. I thoroughly recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast or play on easy mode, that's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two more buttons? You thought I was done. There's two ways to kill a demon in Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize the funniness level, we have the Crucible, which is a direct, instantaneous kill on every enemy. Giant area boss, dead. Previous area boss, dead. The final boss, fuck him. Now I hear you thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second super weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically stands for big fucking gun. Also canonically, it fires a hole directly into the core of Mars. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Mars. 
Now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the ATF at Waco. It clears out everything you can see instantly. I am so thankful the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard mode. And because you're always learning as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets you choose what stats and runes to upgrade. I spec entirely into mobility and ammo, making my character a flimsy, crack-addled spider monkey. As a side note, we should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. They can survive there. Why does Thailand get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what more is there to learn about Doom Eternal? Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may shock you. Those are the... As you may have guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small, blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety of the demons that make the game interesting. Demons can fly, they can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Who is Sandy Loam? Who is Tsushima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. The point of the entire game, therefore, is to balance targets, switch weapons, and scream internally as you repeatedly fail to be cool. Just like high school. What I'm getting at is every demon has completely different behavior and goals from one another. The Doom Hunter rolls around in a comically small tank. The zombies, like us, exist to die. And the Marauder produces controversy. He does a lot of damage, blocks your attacks, fights you at wild speeds, and can only be attacked after blatantly signaling so. I personally have no issue with him, as I find the challenge fun and engaging. And if you don't, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm saying you're bad. I'm not getting into the details for each one, since that's not funny, but don't worry, there are 27 of them without DLC. And if you're wondering why I'm fighting the entire cast of Dante's Inferno, you're actually the minority. This game tries at every moment to make exposition collectible. Why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet, and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people? You cannot stop the procession. <laughs> It feels like one guy wrote the events of the game, and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. So I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. If I say something objectionable, just pretend that it's right. One Brazilian years ago, there was a guy named The Dad, who was effectively God, and he made moths in Lamp Heaven, called The Makers. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective consciousness into one giga moth called The Con Maker, who is the Moth Pope. So the moths rule over the galaxy, sort of, until Earth happens, and then we start fucking everything up. The Moth Pope finds John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about hell before God. Anyways, the Moth Pope, after finding out that hell is real, very reasonably decides to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the moth do whatever they wanted. So now the con maker cannot be replaced and cannot die, so she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now the plan is to get some of that sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets to the Dark Lord in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change, and we need to find a new energy source. So instead of something hard and difficult like solar power, Samuel Hayden is like, what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell? Also, it's on Mars. Earth does this until Hell begins breaking into Mars and John Doom stops them, which is the plot of Doom 2016. This makes Samuel Hayden mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't want to build a windmill. So instead of destroying the demonic crucible, he just brings it back to Earth and catapults John Doom into the backstory planet. If you think that sounds unreasonable, just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel. I only poo-poo farted for the good of you. Unsurprisingly, demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy for the Moth Pope, so John Doom has to fight both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, oh sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. Doom Slayer, you'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what'd he do? He's the giant uncontrollable demon titan. The plot of the main game, to understate it, is psychotic, and acts as an increasing checklist of galactically convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times, goes to the North Pole to kill Santa, fights Croatia, does a little trolling, does a little cockfighting, invades heaven, and permanently kills God, but we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe on a fucking bungee cord, so I understand completely when people say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just wrong. I play Doom Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you, but Eternal's plot is pure insanity 
humanity, and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware that the plot exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just don't care. I played every single level, gleefully wondering, oh boy, what stupid shit is next? I cannot fucking wait. So, play the game for the plot. It is integral to the experience of Doom Eternal. Oh, but Max, or there's a plot hole. How did the Doom Slayer get the first- Everything I've said so far, except some of it, applies in full partially to the base game. But there's 40 dollar dues of DLC where the gameplay is faster, the challenge harder, and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments. 2016 was a wash. Eternal is Usain Bolt, and the Ancient Gods is fucking Venezuelan inflation. You thought it was over when John Doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven, but you were wrong. That's just the beginning. And with both parts of the DLC now fully out, my recommendation cannot be understated. Let's get into why, and more importantly, what- This section of the video is going to be different, far more structural, and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope by simping for 2D women. I will tell you if there's a very big gameplay change, but the point of the DLC is more of what's amazing. If you like Doom Eternal, you will like the DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political YouTube debates advocating for carbon positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot, he's a fucking angel. Also, John Doom's Alexa is God. That's not a joke or exaggeration, his name is Vega and he is the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, the video can't count as spoilers because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC is essentially trolling because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously to revive Satan, exclusively so you can fight him. What could go wrong? Of particular note here on the gameplay side is the final boss, who is Samuel Hayden. Because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous, and my enjoyment of the game is hurt by neither. Every aspect of this is speedy, fun, and everything else I've already said about the game in general. And when you finally beat Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. Yeah. The only thing in the world that could possibly kill John Doom, himself. No blood can be spilled. And this holy blood. So now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong, and the second DLC is just chasing him. This is, of course, where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How does one get to the capital city of hell? Well, that's a great question. First of all, go to the planet of Argentinur, light the bat signal, learn how to train your dragon, okay? Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason, get the key to the Gate of Divum. Now go back to Earth, traverse The Last of Us 2, and find the Gate of Divum. But before I get to the final showdown with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity, there's some cool gameplay I want to talk about. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC, primarily used to defy the laws of gravity, but secondarily gives you everything in the game. Health? No problem. Ammo? Absolutely. My deepest, darkest urges? Yes. As I used this, I became more obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking Builder, and there's plenty of demons to use it on, since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft Pinball, who is fun to fight, I promise. And the blood makers. They are my original OC. Do not steal it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC to gain style. This is the culmination of all of our work. The final battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Cleveland lives up to the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe which implicitly acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you, your identical twin with red eyes in a Gundam. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a beautiful send-off right up until the man himself, who awkwardly waddles around the arena like a penguin, but that's fine, the fight is still cool. Wow, you know, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. <laughs> Got him! Now, before we defenestrate, there's a few details I want to talk about that truly complete this game, make it a real 10 out of good. Firstly, I would classify the music of this game as metal without guitars, and I fucking dig it so much. How do you make metal without a guitar? Well, you sample Mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower. 
It just sounds so good. Normally, music isn't very important, but it's so good that it becomes important. And the role it plays in setting your mood is vital. Also, the main composer, Mick Gordon, like me, hey there. watches virtual YouTubers every waking second of his day. Great minds think alike. In fact, most of the music in this video is just Doom Eternal soundtrack. Guess you'll have to re-watch it over and over again to really listen. Finally, this game looks really good. Not in a, oh wow, look at all these particles I'm stroking out way. It's more like, how does literally anyone have time to model all of the geometry in the game? It is unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. Doom Eternal is such a fast and pulse-pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking loop. How am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it looks like this? Should you buy the game? Yes, I am very biased. If speed and action is what you crave and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your game. I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel in exchange for their souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, run, they're coming.